Um, so my journey with horses obviously began with the racetrack, and I really didn't become what I call awakened until about 2013. And in 2013, I know this is going to sound very esoteric and maybe a little bit out there, but because everything is energy, um, dreams can hold very important information. So if something comes through to you and you remember it very clearly upon awakening, that's actually information that's coming to you. And please don't discount that. Um, it's really important to remember these things that are coming to you that you wouldn't be aware of while you are actually present in your 3D and doing your normal day-to-day -day things. So what happened was, is there was a uh, horse that came to me in a dream. And I was walking through this home where there was all these people that I knew that had already passed. And I wound up somehow in a kitchen, um, opening a window above the sink. And I opened the curtains and this gray horse appears. And she starts splattering. Like, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, what? I said, what is your name? And she said, Lava Lady. And we closed the curtain, and she showed me then an image. If you guys have ever seen, um, uh, what is it? There's a, a '60s kind of swirly thing that you've seen, like this. Uh, I, I don't know how, how to call it, this kind of swirly image. And inside this image, she showed me a a fetal kitten, which is what I thought it was. And I woke up and I'm like, who is Lava Lady? Anyway, for two weeks, this horse haunted me. And I only had a person, one person I could talk to that was an animal communicator. If anybody has uh, talked to communicators, they are really great uh, people who can give you answers and information when you are too emotionally close to something to get it to for yourself. Um, so I said, Lisa, this horse has bothered me. I found her on the internet. I know she exists. She's actually contacted me. Maybe she needs help. I don't know what she wants. So um, we contacted her. She was able to find her. And there was actually two lava ladies, one that was in spirit and one that was a real racehorse here in the present. And that fetal kitten that she was showing me was actually the foal that was inside her. So what lava lady had to say about these two beings and about life and the message that she gave me, which was the start of my spiritual experience with horses, is she says, I don't want to be a racehorse. I don't want my baby to be a racehorse. She says, we're nothing but machines. She says, the only thing that we want to do is have a human love us. She says, we are here to connect with you. We are here to help you. And all somebody does is come, I'm in a beautiful place, I get brushed every day, I have the best food, and I have no connection. So what is the most important thing to a horse as far as their well-being, as far as their souls, as far as their journey in partnering with us? It's to become their partner. It's not master and slave, we're not their controller, they're here to help us. And we've disallowed that help. We haven't allowed them to blossom into their full being because we put all these historic restrictions on them, because they've been machines, because they've fulfilled an ego, because they are a status symbol. But that's not what this is about. And until we recognize their true value as healers, as our teachers, we're never going to see what they're really here for. So how do we create this paradigm shift about what horses are about and why they're here. And during my journey of seeing all the other modalities out there, whether, I won't name them, but we know what they are, nothing was focused on the horse. It was always about how is it going to help the humans? I was like, well, what about them? Don't they have a say? Isn't this what we're supposed to be learning from? And how dare I, as a human being, interpret what it is that they want to tell us? So after my conversation with Lava Lady about a year later and me going on a spiritual experience in British Columbia, I said, okay, horses, what do you want us to learn? What is this that you want to teach us? And that's when this came out. And I wrote this literally in about five minutes. And they gave me a download of what horses are here to teach us. <laughs> And it's a five-segment program about ourselves. Our, their well-being 
is based on our well-being and how we feel about ourselves. And so if they're like, if you can't feel the love within yourself, you're not going to be able to project it and take care of us properly. You're not going to feel the empathy. So how can we help you get into this empathetic space? What are the five steps that we can give you that's going to help us help you? So the first thing that they taught me was responsibility. And that was ownership. And that means being responsible for every choice, every thought, and every feeling. And that doesn't apply to humans. It's gonna be very hard for a lot of us to get this concept in our head that let's say there's an elephant in the circus and we all know the horrors of the circus. You know what? That elephant had a choice. And that choice may not sit well with us. There's no way if an elephant wants out, the elephant's getting out, okay? But it's choosing to help us through awareness. It's choosing to go through that suffering for our well-being for our empathy, for our compassion that we have programmed ourselves out of. Okay. And the second thing they wanted to teach us was about that awareness. And what is this awareness about? It's about feeling the leaves. It's about feeling the rain. It's about watching the flowers bloom. It's about noticing every little subtlety that we are feeling within each other right now. This is not about our thoughts. This is about how we feel. So in this program, we don't over-process thinking. We, we, the horses teach us how to think and feel through our hearts. It's not about the brain. And as much as we want to quantify and justify and analyze all the things that you know we have on paper, the horse is like, that doesn't matter. It's important because it helps our human brains understand things. And I'm not discounting any studies. I think it's all inclusive and all important for everybody's process. But where the horses are coming from, it doesn't matter to them. They just want you to feel. And then the third thing they wanted us to do is learn about how to interact with them on their level. So all these natural horsemanship things that are out there, which are an illusion of cooperation, Again, it's an illusion. It's a dog and pony show. It's not real partnership. The only way you're going to get real partnership is if you are seeing through the eyes of that horse. If you can put yourself in that horse's position and say, hey, if I was this horse and this human is coming at me and asking me to do these certain things, how am I going to feel? It's like when people approach our horses at the rescue and they ask, can I pet them? It's like, don't ask me. You need to ask them. And also, they, when a horse approaches, they give you their head. Well, if you came up to me and I start rubbing you all over your face, you're going to think I'm pretty rude. The horses feel the same way. So it's these little subtleties about how we approach them, about giving them allowance, choice, permission, that is super important and respectful to them. We also don't want to minimalize the fact that they understand everything we say. When I work with horses, I don't give them commands and I don't use one word things. I have a conversation. If I need to come in and clean their stall, I'll ask them to please move over. Can I come in and do this for you? Would you mind moving over? It would be the same conversation as I would have with you. I treat them no differently than I would any other human being or any other creature. And we forget that when we're with a horse or with an animal because it doesn't encompass a human body. And the fourth thing they wanted us to realize is how to get spiritual with them. How to connect with them on that level. Because they ride between those two worlds. They live in a level of awareness that is present and here on this plane and they're totally connected to the energy above. Whatever you want to think that is, whether you think that exists or, or not, I'm not here to try to change your mind or push my beliefs on you, but that is where they live. And so that's where they want us to be. And getting to ride them, that's a gift. That's not something we should assume that they want to do or that we should even do. 
That's after the connection, the relationship has been built. And they say, get on and sit above my heart chakra and let us become one. That's the important thing. I don't force any of our horses at the rescue to be ridden. In fact, most of them say no. The only ones that want to be ridden are my three boys that I've raised myself, Calendar and his two sons. And the only reason I bred is because I wanted a part of him. It wasn't because I was looking to sell or make money or make a profit. The rest of our horses are, have been rescued um, and they have the choice to interact or not interact. They love to do equine therapy work, but they certainly don't want to be ridden. They're not tools. And then the last thing the horses wanted to, us to realize, the importance of meditating with them and sitting in quiet space with them. And when you do that, and you're sitting there either on the ground, in their stall, in a chair, and you're just allowing them to come to you, something really magical happens. They'll align their bodies with different parts of your body, things that need clearing, things that need opening, things that need healing. And it's a very beautiful experience when you go through all those levels. Um, this program is a lot tougher than you would ever expect. I've only had two people complete it because they get to a point in their evolution when they start feeling on such a deep level that it freaks them out and they start running back to the safety of humanity because you are so vulnerable when you open yourself up to a horse. You don't even know how deep it can get. So at this rescue, and somebody had asked a very interesting question during the, the group um, about how do we do this without shoving it down somebody's throat and not insulting people that are still you know, doing things, what I would say, the old way, but it's just a habitual way. It's not right or wrong. It's just different. And this is very different because we have to come out of societal norms in order to get to this place. So how do we teach this? It's experiential. It's by example. It's not by me telling you. It's by you coming and being with people that understand horses at this level and having you go through those experiences. It could be something as simple as feeding and cleaning. But the way it's done where, we're, where we do it, where there's no limitations on the horse, they're, they're like, oh my God, this is the most incredible experience I've had, and I just you know, shoveled a ton of shit. But it's, it's more than that. It's because you allowed a horse into your space on a level that you didn't know at this point in time existed. So this is about our well-being. It's about their well-being, and them being allowed to express themselves fully. And that's the most important thing to them. On a spiritual level, I need to invite a guest friend I brought with me from the United States, Sandy Herrick. And her and I have been friends on this journey for, I don't know, quite a few years now. Um, Sandy is a metaphysician, and I wanted her to bring in an actual message from the horse consciousness, because she can do things that I can't do. She's got gifts that are just really beautiful, and I wanted you all to be able to experience that. So I'm going to hand this over to her for about five or ten minutes and let her channel from the horses themselves so you can actually hear their voices and know what they have to say. Make no mistake, they understand everything we say. Don't have simple conversations with your horses. You can talk to them just like I'm speaking with you now. Sandy. <laughs> 